Hi everyone and welcome to day three of 12 days of Pilates. So hopefully if you've done the first two days then you'll start to be getting a little bit of familiarity in the uh, certainly in the preparation the warm-up so we'll be able to whiz through that and we're going to add on our third movement today. So let us start with our sways. Take the weight into the centre of the feet, allow yourself to be upright and stacked with the chin slightly drawn in, opening across the chest and the upper back. Spread out those toes a little bit, give yourself a bit of toe space. And then from here, just rock to the front of the foot, to the back of the foot. Now we're staying open at the hips, we're not losing our position of ribs. Hands just rest at the side of the body. And as always, we're looking for that slight switch on of the abdominals and then the slight release and the move back. And of course, here we can start to also think about the breathing. So we breathe in through the nose, out through the nose of the mouth, and we take the breath into the fullness of the rib cage and the back. We really don't want to feel that we're disturbing the abdominals as we breathe. And we don't want to disturb those abdominals because as we come forward and we feel that slight tensioning, we can't then expand the belly as we breathe. So we keep the breath moving into the mobility of the ribs. So in through the nose, out through nose or mouth, into the fullness of the breath of the rib cage. Breath stays even throughout. Just bring it back to centre now so we find ourselves directly above the insteps. And without adding any rotation, just moving into that side bend. Again, it's that sensation of lifting up and coming over rather than collapsing. And I don't mind whether you feel you automatically want to breathe in as you side bend or breathe out as you side bend. Just see what comes natural to you. I really don't want you to fight with the breath. It would be very easy for me to be very prescriptive with the breath. It's not the way I work. And I do need you to find the path that gives you least resistance in your movements. So moving into that and then bringing it back to center and we move into our foot pedals. So we soften one knee to lift the heel, we lift the opposite arm, and then we rise and change. Again, those ribs stay drawn in, the knee as it bends tracks the second and third toe. So as we bend the knee, we don't wanna feel like it's wandering in and out, we're stable through the hips. Shoulders down, crown of the head lifts to the ceiling. So as always, there is this sense of lift and opposition, pressing down firmly into the ground as we rebound towards the ceiling. Good, and turning side on so that you can see, I'm not moving anything else. My ribs stay soft, and then bringing it back to center, I'm gonna lift both heels, I'm gonna lift my arms, now how far I take my arms depends on how well I can maintain my balance. I'm gonna bring it down, I'm gonna place the weight into the center of the feet, I'm gonna turn my palms back. I'm gonna slide my shoulder blades towards the midline, turn my head. I'm gonna lift, breathing in. I'm gonna bring it down, I'm gonna turn my palms, I'm gonna turn my head the other way. So I'm working into the expansion of my chest. I'm working into the glideability of my shoulder blades. I'm working into the mobility of my neck. I'm working into the connection that prevents my ribs from pulling away from my hips. I'm working into the balance as I come up onto my toes without rolling only onto my little toes. One more. And then bring it back to center and we go into that little crease of the hip as we bow forward and then squeeze back up again. So again, side on. I'm keeping that distance at the front edge of my body. I'm using my glutes to stand back up again. So I'm just coming into my little hitch at the hip and then stand up. Now you can have a little softness in the knee as you do this and you can do something else with your arms. If you don't like holding them at the side, you could take them across the chest. It's fine. But it's important that you keep those distances between those bony landmarks that we've spoken of before and I will undoubtedly speak of again. Just do a couple more of these. Again, noticing that we're firm and steady through both feet. There is that little squeeze of the buttocks as we come back up again. 
and then all the way back up and just doing a few little shoulder rolls, few in each direction, just to get again a sense of movement and mobility. And you could give your legs a little shake out at this point as well if you wanted to. Okay, taking ourselves into our squat. So yesterday's movement was our squat. So if you remember, we utilized the little hip hinge. So we did that little hip hinge, and then as if we were bending to pick up a box on the floor, we kept that spine long, no collapsing, and then we drive back up through those feet. So a little hip hinge, bend the knees. Knees, of course, always track second and third toes. This is your picking up something from the floor. This is your getting something off the bottom shelf. This is your going to sit down, but changing your mind. And keep that going, but again, just notice that those knees, as they bend, they track second and third toes. We're firm, we're stable, we don't wanna feel like we're clashing. If you need to, you really need to get something to put between the knees so that you know that when you bend, everything tracks in alignment. So you could always use something like a yoga block if you needed to, something like that. So a couple more of those. Remember, we're really engaging these glutes as we stand back up again. These are our power muscles. These are the muscles that are gonna keep us standing up and getting up when we're older. So we've got that little hip hinge, we keep that long spine, and then we squeeze all the way back up. Okay, we're moving into our third movement. We're doing tandem stance. It's a balance. We're gonna take one foot forward of the, I don't mind which leg goes first, Okay, I'm gonna take one foot in front of the other. Now, if you're really wobbly, you might need to just put your fingers on the surface, maybe the back of the sofa or a counter in the kitchen. But I do need you to make sure that you've got your heel directly behind your toe. What tends to happen is people tend to skew their feet out. So imagine there's a line, maybe the edge of your yoga mat or something, and put the outside and the inside edge of those feet directly against that mat edge. Now squeeze the inner thighs together. Lift the pubic bone slightly and just balance the weight a little bit more between front and back feet. You'll naturally want to move your weight backwards. So just keep the weight a little bit more balanced. Really squeeze the inner thigh. Feel how that draws up through the inner thigh, engages into the groin, the pelvic floor. And again, we've got that slight sensation of those abdominals, those deeper abdominals just naturally drawing in. Now, if this is really wobbly, then this might be it, just stay here. Practice this first. Remember we've got a wobbly side and a wobblier side. So practice this first and notice when you start to move backwards and really load that back leg. Okay, now if you're okay here, or you think you're okay, take the arms forward. Whichever is your forward leg, that's the arm we're going to use, okay? So from here, we're gonna take that arm down. We're gonna keep everything else facing forward. The other arm reaches through. We're going to turn those ribs looking towards the hand behind us and then we're going to sweep it back down moving the eye line with the hand <clears throat> and again so keep the weight centered squeeze those inner thighs lightly engage those abdominals think of just slightly bringing the pubic bone up to keep that length of the curve of the low back <sighs> and don't lose concentration now you may find that as you do this the back heels start to move and maybe without even noticing your feet have started to skew out a bit just adjust so that you you really are on that tight rope balance if that's impossible even without the arms then do the same thing but with your heel in line with your big toe so there's just a slight bit of distance you don't want to go hip distance but just go as narrow as you can. Let's just try that one more time. So again, weight into center, use those glutes. If you're using the arms, the arm sweeps and you follow with the gaze and then bring it back to center, release that, shake out the legs. You may have felt that heavily in the calf of the back leg and the glute, the outer hip of the back leg. So we need to change legs, so all you need to do is just change the forward leg, it's that simple. And again, make sure everything, there's no turning out, everything is on a tightrope. Or, worst case scenario, inside edge of the front foot is in line with the big toe of the back foot. Okay, so once again, 
Think of lifting the pubic bone, opening up those hips. So we're not folding. The ribs are drawn in, the breastbone is lifting. We're tall, we're exactly as we were before, just on a very narrow stance. Okay, maybe this is your wobbly side and maybe you just wanna keep your fingers lightly on a surface just for the, the sense of security until you feel more controlled. Inner thighs draw, pelvic floor lifts. Those glutes should be wrapping and active. If you're comfortable with that, ooh, got my wobbly head on, you're gonna take the arms forward, shoulders slide down. The forward leg, that's the arm we're using. We let the arms sweep down, we let, let the ribs turn lightly. We follow the hand with the gaze. We bring it back to center and we bring it back. Good, and again. So I do have a very big discrepancy in my balance, one side compared to the other. Most people do. You may be able to identify why I can, you may not, but you might just notice there's a big discrepancy. So keep that going. So for me, I have, I really feel this tension now in my calf because I'm very tight in my right side. So, so keep squeezing those inner thighs, drop the shoulder down. As this arm brings the ribs back, let the other arm take the ribs forward, but keep your hips square. And we'll do that just one more time. Notice if the weight has drifted heavily backwards. Good, and then bring it back to center, release and give those legs a little shake out. So, everything's been standing so far, all for standing, stability and strength around the hips and the glutes and balance. We will see you again tomorrow. Wonder what tomorrow's gonna bring. Stick around and I'll show you. Take care.